Now I want to share part of my audiobook with you. This is a six-minute excerpt from my book, The Fail-Safe Solopreneur, Six Essential Practices to Manage Your Well-Being Working for Yourself. It's from practice three, which I call, Can You Manage Yourself Better Than a Boss? And this is about dealing with stress, anxiety, and performance working on your own. This book, again, it's based on 10 years of working virtually and independently. Um, I haven't had a job in 10 years, and I consider that an accomplishment. And uh, the book offers a practical guide on how to deal with the downsides of entrepreneurship, such as failure, anxiety, instability, and loneliness. The audiobook is narrated by me, and you can get the book on Amazon in Kindle and paperback and in audiobook form on Amazon Audible, and iTunes, and uh, the links are below. So I hope you enjoy this excerpt from The Fail-Safe Solopreneur. Practice three. Can you manage yourself better than a boss? Dealing with anxiety, stress, and performance. When I was 25, I was lucky to be recruited by a prominent businessman to work in New York City. He was vice chairman of the world's largest scientific publishing company with 7,000 employees across the globe. I would be his analyst and help the company improve its reputation with academics, librarians, and government officials around the world. I met with him on a Saturday morning after arriving from a 20-hour flight from Beijing. After welcoming me to the Park Avenue headquarters, he handed me a brand new Blackberry. It was smooth and sleek, the nicest phone I'd ever had. Please keep this with you, he told me. Three months later, I'm working out at the gym. I had decided to leave my BlackBerry at home. I needed a break. Each incoming email would trigger a blinking red light. Most were from my boss. He was tireless, waking up at 5 a.m. to catch the morning train from New Jersey into Manhattan and then leaving late at night after leading a number of community engagements. His responsibilities, output, and response time were astounding, but for me, it was nerve-wracking. I was one red blink away from grinding his machine to a halt. I finished an hour-long boxing class and then enjoyed a long, cool-down stretch. The workout and mental space was wonderful. The next day, my boss summoned me into the office. Why didn't you respond to my message last night? Oh, shit. Um, I was at the gym. A long pause. He stared at me, incredulity morphing into disgust. Darren, you know why I got you that Blackberry, right? I knew the answer, but was too proud to answer. Don't do it again. We all have awful boss stories, and most of us choose to work for ourselves so we never have to report to someone ever again. But the irony of self-employment is you need to manage yourself better than a boss. Your livelihood and well-being count on it. It's a strange situation to be in. No one is watching you. You don't have to get to work by 8 a.m. or respond to anyone. You set the rules. Want to work in your underwear all day? Go ahead. On the flip side, your business is all-consuming. Fire here. Your website is down. Fire there. Your bank account is frozen. Fire! A customer needs a reply, and on and on. You can never escape it. And when you do, even for an afternoon or weekend, you feel guilty for leaving your baby behind. You can always do more. That's the paradox of working solo. You need to use all your faculties to get work done and to stop working. Like holding two opposing ideas in your mind, it's difficult to honor both. i found that willpower can only take me so far. Just as companies need strong corporate governance to stay on target, I need reporting structures to keep me accountable. I must also institute checks and balances and rituals to keep me from self-destructing and do all this without a boss because I'm never going back. Take time off seriously. Hustle. Grind. Crush it. Bullshit. Asking entrepreneurs to work nonstop from morning to night until their business succeeds is horrible advice. That's like asking a professional athlete for his or her peak performance eight hours a day, six days a week, for months on end. Humans are not machines. Our energy waxes and wanes, 
and we need deadlines to signal rest and recovery. Because business never stops, I set finishing lines, 7 p.m. on weekdays, 2 p.m. on Saturdays, and absolutely no work on Sundays. More than anything, this is to give myself permission to rest. It's okay. I remind myself that I chose this life so I could watch a movie Monday afternoon or dance in the park Friday as the sun sets. Each week, I schedule playtime before work time. You need to refuel your tank, not just to survive, but to do your best work. For most of us, our careers are marathons. It's about staying in the game long enough to strike gold. We have to be skilled, present, and prepared to catch the few big waves that will make all the difference. Sure, sometimes you'll need to sprint and push harder than normal. But those sprints should be matched with proportionate intervals of rest. Limiting work time reminds me that work is precious and that I only have so many good hours a day to make something people cherish. When time runs out, I look forward